right, let's see if we can make it through this one in one take. <laughs> yeah, and now on to the intro. I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And I just made a pose. Nice. Good job, Sailor Scout. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 4, Bloom and Gloom. Okay, my group of friends had this really big reaction with the, what, I was got a cutie mark? And I'm like, uh, yeah, but that's not really the point of the episode. Though I was hoping this kind of point was going to be brought up with one of the cutie mark crusaders getting their cutie mark, but... Well, she is one of the cutie mark crusaders. She just happens to be the Manhattan chapter. Yeah, but I was mostly talking about the main three. You know that I nitpick. And it's much appreciated. And in this episode, I immediately thought, as she went to bed after the whole questioning herself thing, this entire episode is going to be a dream sequence. Yep, told it. Though, part of the way through the dream sequence, I was thinking, this is kind of like Groundhog's Day. They're very similar. But no, it was just the dream looping till she figured it out. It was just herself holding herself back. And once again, they seem to be fitting more than one lesson to each episode. Yeah, there's definitely multiple lessons in here. And this thing screamed dream sequence from the beginning. Which, even though that meant that we would probably get to see Princess Luna, which yay, I was really kind of disappointed in that when we got out to the shadowy forest and there was a mysterious figure offering to take away her cutie mark i really wanted that to be since uh starlight glimmer really wanted that oh and a note on the shadow figure did you notice the voice changes and seemed to be a mix of two voices at one point to me it was a mix of sweetie bells and scootaloo's voice and later on it was a mix of a deeper voice with apple blooms no, it was different every time, uh, but I was paying more attention to how Apple Bloom sounded. Cause to me, it sounds she sounds different to me. Um, I don't know if they change voice actresses or they're just finally trying to make her sound a little older. All of the Cutie Marks Crusaders' voices do seem to be older to me, and they're all still the same voice actors. I'm thinking they're just letting them age up because apparently this entire season's focused on Cutie Marks. Yes, so far three out of four episodes have been about cutie marks. Like we didn't know this was coming considering the toy line. I love how you can't pay attention to anything if you don't want spoilers. Damn you, toy line. It's actually how I found out about some movies before they came out in previews. Spaceball action figures, spaceball lunchboxes, and don't forget the flamethrower for the kitties. <laughs> I still want Spaceballs 2, the quest for more money. Yeah, that would be awesome. And the episode had a nice flow to it. It was mostly about self-doubt and how kids are like, I just want to grow up. And then they get to the point where they're like, Sue, what am I going to do when I grow up? And then there's a part of the lesson about how people are going to accept you for who you are. Though that kind of has a caveat to it. Well, the focus seemed more to be that, you know, your cutie mark isn't going to change who you are because it's a representation of who you are. So, even though it's a big event in the pony world, it's not going to change you as a person. So, nobody's going to start hating you because of your cutie mark. Trust me, if they hated you, they're still going to hate you. And if they didn't hate you, they're still going to like you. I really would like to see Babs' cutie mark. Is she actually a stylist, or was that just the cutie mark crusaders guessing? I really hope we get to see her again in this season. Well, considering the implication that the main six are supposed to be traveling, I'm pretty sure we can manage to make it to Manhattan, or that Babs could come for a visit. Because I would really like to know if the cutie mark actually looks like the scissors that were in the letter, or if it's more stylized. Yeah, the imagery was nice in this episode, and the whole, like, wait a minute, so... Is this just her brain playing with her, or are there actual ponies in the MLP world who are like, Oh, thank God, someone has a cutie mark like me. Take over my job. I need a vacation. <laughs> that would be interesting to find out if there are actual pest ponies. I mean, presumably there are pests, because we already know of Paris sprites and the fruit bats and the vampire bats forgot about those the vampire fruit bats mm -hmm. yeah and just i wonder how much of the stuff she had in her um dreams was actually you know real are those actual pests or what and and is that an actual job and now i'm trying to think back over the apple family cutie marks from you know the series pilot to go Okay, I know everyone pretty much has an apple-themed name, but were they really all apple cutie marks? <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking even if it wasn't apple-themed, she wouldn't have anything to worry about because Applejack is pretty accepting except if you try to eat her apples. <laughs> no, I don't think it would be a problem with the family the way, you know, 
that nightmare played out. Oh, and speaking of the that part of the nightmare, this is as much as I ever heard Big Mac talk. Yes, I'm glad that his voice actor finally got paid for something. <laughs> it, it's even more than he talked in the first episode that he was actually spoke, where he actually spoke, where he had actual lines. But this one, he just kept talking and talking. I'm like, wow, I'm gonna have to go back and time this to see if it is actually longer. <laughs> It felt like it was. So any more thoughts on this episode? Of course. We haven't even really touched on Princess Luna. And the fact of, hmm, it's okay for me to share that other ponies are also having the same problem that you are. But should I really be letting you see your friend's nightmares? We get into that whole privacy issue again. It was entertaining <laughs> for the audience, but Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle didn't get to see Apple Bloom's nightmares or each other's. So how is that fair? And also, their nightmares seem to have more of a theme relating to what the fandom speculates their talents are, because we've seen them do Daredevil stuff and singing, where all of Apple Bloom's didn't tie too closely into her skills, except for the middle one, the potion maker, because she had been practicing making potions. And I thought it was funny that Sweetie Belle's was a broom, because there have been some fan art comics where those three end up with uh, menial labor and janitorial type job cutie marks. <laughs> oh, and then the fact that we had both Vinyl and Octavia sitting next to each other. I also love how uh, Rarity is like, I'm going to be nice and give her a one. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I can't look, but here's a one. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, why would Rarity be judging a singing competition? Dreams don't have to make sense, number one. Number two, Sweetie Belle has always hoped for Rarity's approval. Hmm, both valid points. I must remember to ask you more questions in the future. <laughs> and there's lots of little details in the dreams, too. Like, in the background on one of the shots, you can actually see Pinkie Pie making the rooster call as she floats up with balloons. I caught the balloons and the rooster call. I missed that it was Pinkie Pie. Mm-hmm. Of course I would catch that. I just remember thinking, okay, so that's unusual. So does that mean we're back to the real world or is this another dream? So yeah, this episode was definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> it was. I mean, there were some good lessons in it and background and information and actual things to worry about with growing up and, you know, how growing up changes you and... You can't be a cutie mark crusader if you have your cutie mark, but that doesn't mean our friendship has to end. I was kind of mostly hoping an episode like this would have been the one where one of them actually had gotten their cutie mark. And that we actually had to deal with this in the real world and not as a nightmare in the dreamscape. Mm -hmm. Also interesting to note that the dreamscape is full of doors, just like Monsters, Inc. <laughs> didn't even think about that, kind of like I didn't even think that, oh, that shadowy person could be Starlight Glimmer. Didn't even cross my mind. Well, I was really hopeful for that, but then even though I knew that it was probably a dream sequence, I was still hopeful. <laughs> but then when the magic that took it away was just a whirlwind, I'm like, okay, definitely not. Too bad. I mean, she escaped. She has to come back. But with how they usually handle things, we won't probably see her until the last two episodes. <laughs> well, but there must be some hints of her somewhere throughout the rest of the season. We will hope. Definitely. And I like the progression that Luna's speech patterns have taken. She's still very serious, but her speaking continues to be less archaic. And she seems much kinder and gentler, even from one dream sequence to another. Because this is the third time that we have had Luna assisting with the nightmares of the Cutie Mark Crusaders. So she has now directly intervened with all three of them. I mean, this last one, she brought all three of them together. But first Scootaloo, then Sweetie Belle, now Apple Bloom. Which means that we have devoted three episodes to nightmares. So it does bring up a question for me. Can Luna exist in more than one dream at a time? I would think that she could assist with more than one dream at a time. You know, by standing in the hall and using magic. But I wouldn't think that she could enter more than one dream at a time. Otherwise, she should have shown up sooner. Mm. As she did imply that it was a very busy night. But at the same time, based on the glimpses we got of Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo's nightmares, 
doesn't look like she had helped them yet. So who else was she helping? I mean, that was plenty of doors. Well, there's probably plenty of people having nightmares and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, yeah, is it any wonder she kind of went a bit crazy? Because people's minds are very scary places. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I even scare myself. Yeah, we both do that. Because I just, wow, my brain went there. <laughs> so, what are your final thoughts in this episode? It was fun, but I was really hoping that after the season set up in the first two episodes, and the, okay, we finished decorating the secret base, that we'd go out on another mission. Not that the lessons here weren't valuable, and not that the Cutie Mark Crusaders don't need more airtime, especially in a season that seems to be devoted to Cutie Marks. But as I said, this is the third Nightmare episode. We changed the format a little bit. Well, overall, the episode was good, the pacing was good, though I did predict that this is going to be a dream sequence. Boom, yep, dream sequence. Like, now how are they going to handle it? Though, as I said before, I did question about halfway through, like, are, is it actual dream sequence? Or did that creature actually just set up a Groundhog's Day scenario where she has to relive the same sequence over and over again until she figures out exactly what's going on? And then, yep, definitely dream sequence. Oh, look, there's Luna. <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole, is she going to? Yep, she's going to show the other Kitty Mark Crusaders nightmares. Huh, okay. These are hints. I wonder if they're actually hinting for something, or are they just gonna, like, oh, nope, this is actually what the key marks are. What? <laughs> that has nothing to do with what you... You. But as I said, I really liked the episodes, and I can't wait for the next one. Hopefully it's more story. If not, let's hope it's a really fun episode. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 5, Episode 4, Bloom and Gloom. Thanks for listening. Enjoy Lux's art? You can find more of it on Tumblr and DeviantArt. Want to keep up to date with our podcast? You can follow us on Tumblr as well. Really like our channel? Please leave a friendly comment and consider subscribing. Really like Lux's art? You can have some of your own. He is currently open for commissions. Links in the description.